Very excited to have Dr. Mark Edmund here all the way from New Zealand. Technology is truly amazing, isn't it? And we even got the time difference correct. So I'm, I'm very proud of us, Dr. Edmund. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I always love having the Kiwis on because the accents are the best. I think you guys have the best accents of anyone um, out there. So I saw this article, New Zealand smoking ban, health experts criticize new government's shock reversal because apparently apparently New Zealand was going to ban cigarettes for uh, anyone born after 2008. This is what I wrote or read in this article. They wrote about this uh, a while back. This is a uh, quote, uh, we want to make sure young people never start smoking, Health Minister Dr. Ayesha Baral said, if I'm saying that correctly. And then all of a sudden, they need money. And so they're like, you know what, we're just going to get rid of this smoking ban <laughs> because we just need the money. And the reason I think this is interesting, not trying to take a political stance on a smoking ban itself, whether they work or, or whether they're good or bad, but just to say that as a country that seemed to love banning things, New Zealand was at the head of the line over COVID. You know, you had to stay home. You can't travel. Um, you had professional, serious professional consequences as a doctor uh, through all this. And then when they say that they're, they're doing all this for our health, but then all of a sudden they need money. They're like, yeah, forget about it. <laughs> we need the money. So that's why I titled this like the hypocrisy of medical legislation. Cause it's just interesting to see how governments make their choices when they constantly are trying to sell to us that they do things for the public benefit or for our health. It's it, this, I just think this, this just seemed to, to me to, to kind of call into question whether, whether that's really the truth. I don't know. I pass it to you. What do you think, Dr. Admin? Yeah, I, I, I always, yeah, I've got a, a degree of skepticism whenever I see that stuff as well. And I'm always looking for, you know, is the, is the, is the motive really what is in people's best interests or is the motive just to, uh, for popularity or to be seen to be doing something or, you know, or to like, uh, to, you know, make more money. So yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, I get. I yes, I guess you didn't want to get into the into the you know the smoking sort of stuff. So yeah, I'll, I'll um yeah, we'll leave it at that. I guess. Oh, you can get into the smoking stuff if you want. I just figured it was interesting because I I I I I have found there to be a pattern that I don't know governments whether they're here or across the world they often say that they have very benevolent reasons for what they do, but it seems like when power or money get in the way that. They, those are the choices go to sleep at night thinking that that was what it was about or they try to tell us is what it's about it seems like anytime power or money run, runs up against benevolence it's like uh we we have our i don't know we 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 know which gods we serve um all right let me show everybody this article <laughs> this this is you this is a funny picture um <laughs> ministry of health refutes how do i pronounce this is it wanaka wanaka Wanaka, okay. Yeah, Wanaka nice. GP's comments. So this says, um, Dr. Mark Edmond was unable to continue working as a GP at Aspiring Medical Center where he had worked for eight years because he remained unvaccinated for COVID-19 and a government health order has mandated that health workers must be vaccinated because they have an ethical and legal obligation not to put their vulnerable patients at risk. Tell us a little bit about what happened to you. Yeah, well, the, our government said that you know we were health workers and that we it was our responsibility to be vaccinated in order to protect the people around us and so that and and it applied to teachers and deport workers and uh things as well wow. to the point that if you chose not to get vaccinated then you weren't allowed to work so that was and around the the time this article ran i had uh, used up all my time that was available to get vaccinated and still hadn't made the right decision. And so <laughs> that meant that I was no longer able to work. So I got, uh, I got stood down from work at that point. And so then there was, I got interviewed and that trigger in the, for our local paper, the Wanaka Sun, and that triggered this response from the Ministry of Health. 
Okay. Um, let's go back to it. What did you think about, what did you think about the coverage? I mean, I don't know if this might've been the only thing written, but what do you think about the media in New Zealand's coverage of these issues and how did that, how did that affect the situation you found yourself in? Like, do you think that they have, if they had covered the pandemic differently, doctors like yourself might still be practicing the way you were, but they, but instead they were running kind of lockstep with the government. There wasn't a whole lot of pushback. I'm just curious what you think the role of, of like the journalists and, and maybe you could explain a little bit to us how the media works in New Zealand. Is it, is it owned by the, the government? Is it, you know, funded in part by the government? How does it all work? Yeah, there's a, there was a really interesting thing that happened in New Zealand where the media got a whole lot of funding uh and i can't remember the i can't remember the figures so but um so something like 20 million dollars or something like that it was a it was a very interesting type of funding they got though which was that they they got all that money because i think they were struggling a little bit like particularly like newspapers and um so the they were able to use the money uh, as long as they they put an emphasis on some particular things. Also, it wasn't actually a grant as such. It was more like a loan without a uh, that could be pulled back at any time if it was looked like that they weren't in alignment with what the what the money was intended for it was money with strings essentially and it, and it had the potential to hang over these organizations for you know in an indefinite period to be pulled back and so it was it was really a chain for you know controlling what was said and what was not said so in terms of what happened uh, as the coverage the only reason i got an interview with the wanaka sun was that uh that they were um, sympathetic towards what was going on with me from a personal like um, level, like that you know we knew we knew each other, and so they were uh, they w they weren't trying to follow any sort of uh, particular narrative. They had were a local paper that was um, I presume locally funded i don't actually know the details of that it, they seemed like it was sort of uh not so much under the control of what was going on but then as a result of that then then the mainstream media then leapt in to sort of counter that i guess it seemed to to me it seemed very obvious that there's no way i was getting any sort of publicity um from the mainstream and then when i did get some publicity they were quick to you know, counter that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because if you, if you look at this article again, I mean, a lot of the stuff that they're refuting about you has been, I mean, since then has been, uh, and they just go back and forth between ministry of health, chief science advisor, Dr. Ian town. And like what he says, <laughs> and you talk about, is it gene therapy? Is it effective? Um, which, you know, our CDC came out and said, we should treat vaccinated, unvaccinated the same. Their their policy ended up being that we should treat them the same because uh, it's not preventing transmission. But that was after like all these people lost their jobs. And even though we're finding out, anyway, this was all a political mess that they knew far well was opposite of what they were discussing, even when they were saying that we needed to have lockdowns and we needed to have um, vaccine mandates and all this other stuff. But, but uh they just like it just seems like they just regurgitate whatever the government the government spokesperson here um is saying and she's like well dr ian says it's safe dr ian says it's effective dr ian says it's not gene therapy dr ian says it's fine and then this guy mark he gets like three sentences and he's just nuts <laughs> yeah <laughs> so anyway yeah it's i can imagine it's like it's a tough um whoops put you out of there it's it's a tough decision when you get a call like hey we're doing a story would you like to comment it's probably a tough decision whether to say you know what i don't want to comment at all or at least try and see if they'll give you a fair shot i don't know i'm not sure what i would do in that circumstance yeah i was you're absolutely right i knew that i was going to be sticking my neck up um uh head up above the parapet you know and so there was 
my uh, my partners at work weren't that keen for me to get any sort of um, publicity. They were already kind of struggling with my decision anyway, because in, in, in terms of like, I don't, I don't think they sort of held that against me personally, but they, they kind of felt like, oh, this is just going to make things difficult for us. And so wouldn't it just be easier if you, if you towed the line? And so it's, and, and then also like, you know, there was this, you know, there's this feeling like, you, you know, you need to have your, your ducks in a row and that, that you're going to become um, subject to criticism and the, you know, and obviously there's going to be some, you know, negative comments and yeah and and indeed there were like it was i my understanding i think it was the wanaka sun's most uh commented on facebook page that they think they'd ever had so there was this flurry of back and forth but what, what was interesting was a lot you know every time there was a comment you know criticizing what i was saying then um then people in the community would jump on and give a counter comment and so as a result there was this big back and forth that went on and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah so it was it was a bit scary for me but the at the same time i got a lot of um support with, from uh i guess the the people who were sort of on my page and so that was really nice Great. Okay. Well, I want to ask you about your professional journey and everything and uh, what you're doing now and how New Zealand is doing now. Cause like when I had the Baileys on Dr. Sam and Mark Bailey, it sounded like they were in some kind of um, gulag or something. I mean, it was like this beautiful country that uh, I would love to go to, but it feels like it's like a jail, but I don't know if that's changed. Maybe things are loosened up there just a little bit. Um, let me just tell people about my wine real fast. Okay. Dr. Um, if you are looking for a gift for the holiday, you like Malbecs, which I say are the poor man's Pinot Noir, but they're also just very good. Uh, these are from high altitude, remote regions of Argentina and AllisonWinePromo.com is a great way to get a wine for whatever holiday you're celebrating where like you're going to see grandma, you haven't seen her in a few years, you unfriended her on Facebook. If you're really bad about it, she got the shot. You didn't, she voted for Trump. You didn't, whatever the reason is, you can give her some AllisonWinePromo.com and I'm sure she will forget all about it. You know, you only have to give grandma one glass of wine and she's a little tipsy. She's never going to remember any of the negativity that happened over the last couple of years. You get 50% off the wine itself and 50% off shipping. Like the advertisement says, these are high altitude, extremist altitude and old world Malbec's one from the um, vineyard in Argentina that is over 200 years old. It's the third um, oldest vineyard in the world, uh, or third highest vineyard in the world. I need to go back and check on that. 200 years now. <laughs> There's one from over 200 years old. That's all I can tell you at this point. Anyway, it's very high and very old, so it's a great reason to get the wine. It's just very good. It's a great way to support my work. They've been with me since the beginning, and if um, you don't drink it yourself, like I said, it's a great gift. So thank you to Bonner Wine. Thanks to everybody who goes over to AllisonWinePromo.com. Really appreciate it. There are also links to affiliate sponsors in the description. There's um, TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison if you like coffee and tea, uh, which is organic tea and coffee from Nicaragua, and um, high vitamin D uh, cod liver butter oil blend if you're into that too. You can go to greenpasture.org and uh, use Allison10 as your promo code, Allison10 with greenpasture.org. And um, then also, like I said, twininginecoffee.com slash Allison. Okay. All right. So, Dr. Edmund, let's go back to, let's go to your website real fast, The Good Doc. Um, you're no longer, you said you're no longer part of the registry, I think is what you said. So, you went yeah. from just a pretty mainstream family health general practitioner to a health consultant. Can you take us through that journey? Yeah, well, that's a that was a pretty interesting uh, time for me. The I the the process of you know the thing that triggered my change was that we got a letter from the medical council and it said that we needed it was our responsibility to get vaccinated and that it was. Uh, it was unprofessional for us to talk about any negative effects of vaccination or any sort of anti-vaccination uh, information. And I was like, that was that really spurred me into action. I'd had some, uh, you know, doubts and concerns about what was being portrayed in the media in terms of what was happening with the pandemic. And, and so this is nagging suspicion that I hadn't really uh i hadn't really sort of dug deep on that and and i'd been part of what was 
uh, going on. I had been at the front line in the in the community based assessment centres, you know, doing the swabbing, you know, the uh, and you know, you know, doing my part to try and stop the you know the virus from coming into the country, and you know, was on those, I was in that place. But at the same time, I was kind of a little bit concerned about, you know, maybe some things are not quite adding up. Then I got this letter and it was, for me, that was, you know, where do you get off telling me what to do with my health? I think that's not appropriate. And the second thing is, like, you're telling me how to give advice to my patients. And that is my job. Your your job is to, uh, is to um, provide a um a a standard you know that that should be um you know followed as far as doctors go but it needs to be uh in terms of how you conduct yourself and this was saying i needed to give unbalanced information and so that 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 i was that was like this this is not good and so that triggered me to look into things in further detail and I uh, turned out I picked the scab off a um, a big abscess, and so it was <laughs> like. And then I started following it uh, all the way down. And you mentioned that you've had the Baileys on, so I imagine that there's people have had that um, that information about how down what's down that rabbit hole. So mm -hmm. that made me realise. A, the swabs that I was doing was not in the best interests of my patients. And the uh, then, and it also made me realize a lot of the way I was conducting my practice and what I was doing in health in terms of like, in terms of viruses and the way, um, the way people should behave around their health was not really very good. And so I then, was and then plus the the medical council looked like they were going to uh try and shut me down anyway so at that point i was like okay i need to have a real a rethink about what's going on and but how i'm gonna do i still want to be in medicine do i do i still if i if i do if i am still in health you know how do i want to get uh you know, what's what's my new approach going to be and so that ended up with the um, yeah, there was a bit of a, there was a real uh, internal battle because I realized a lot of my um, self-worth was tied up in, in being a doctor and doctors have kind of been given, I don't think in, in a justified way, is this kind of godlike status and um, in terms of people's lives, you know, like the, the as you pointed out with the article, you know, that, um, that the um you know the the doctor says this you know and so that there's that's the way you should that's the way you need to take it and so um so that that made me go and have a good hard look about you know what actually makes a difference to people's health and the and the conclusion i came to and this hints a little bit back to what you were saying around um the smoking thing is that is that I like, like a disempowering process is not in the in the in the best interests of people's health and so if you're gonna if you're gonna start dictating to people what they have to and hit and uh do around their health you take away their power and so whereas uh true power the true health comes from being a, a being powerful around what you do with your body what you do with your lifestyle and what you do with your thinking and so if you've got some sort of nanny state where there where everything gets um done for you everything you get told what to do you have to follow this you have to follow that uh, that that really undermines that that autonomy that self-power and so mm -hmm. that's the that's the way that i have uh um approached my um helping people now